Hi there, this is Jeanette, and I have a video today featuring a paper doll stamp by Julie Nutting. This one is called Rita, and I created um, my art journal page to sort of look like a Parisian scene. So I'm going to take you through how I created it. So I have some Nina cardstock here, and I have my Fiskars sort of large press, and I'm going to stamp the image two times using Memento Rich Cocoa ink. For the second time, I'm just sort of stamping the top portion of the stamp. Then I'm taking some London Fog, which is a light gray color, and I'm stamping my pattern paper. So this will be for the dress. I'm going to stamp it a few times. Now the second time that I stamped it, I accidentally picked up the rich cocoa. And so that was too dark. It wasn't what I wanted. So I had to sort of wipe it off and stamp it again with the London Fog. You see I'm just trying to position it so I don't waste too much paper. And then for her like belt and her hat and her shoes, I'm stamping it with some London Fog onto some light gray cardstock. This is a background stamp by My Favorite Things. I believe it's called Typewriter. And I'm just using some sort of pale brown ink and I'm stamping it onto the sort of skin of the paper doll just to add a little bit of interest. Um, a lot of times you see people stamping on paper that already has the lettering on it. Um, I find this an easier way just to have the lettering. Um, and you don't always have to try to find paper with the lettering. Now I tried something different. I want to add I guess a disclaimer, just saying this is how I did it just to see how it was going to look. Generally I color my skin and then I stamp the lettering on top, but I wanted to see if it would become muted if I colored over it. So that's what I did and it did mute it down. I didn't see that it the ink transferred onto my Copic markers, but that's something you should be aware of. So if you're scared of sort of getting ink on your Copic markers, do the opposite of what I did. So just color with your markers and then go ahead and stamp the the letters on top or you know if you do have some pattern paper with letters on it then you can use that. So now I'm stamping it a third time because I decided that I wanted to have an extra layer for the hair. So basically I have um, I've stamped it three times, different portions, and you're going to see how I sort of layer all that together to give a little bit of dimension to the page. So I'm just coloring the hair with different shades of brown, and I've listed all those numbers for you so that if you want to duplicate the, I guess, hair tone, then you can. I am not being too, too careful about my coloring because I know I'm going to be cutting it out. So if I go over the edges, um, I'm not too, too concerned. Just going to give it a little bit more contrast with this darker marker. I'm just sort of tracing the little curls that are already drawn onto the hair. And now I'm going to start cutting out the different portions using my little craft scissors here. So you can see I cut out that top portion above her belt and now I'm cutting out the hair and I'm just using this zig glue pen to adhere it down. Now I like to glue everything down while the main image or the whole entire image is not cut out and this way I just sort of have to cut it out once and it just makes a sort of neater finish. I cut out or didn't really cut out but I sort of trimmed out the paper for the skirt of her dress and I'm just using some cool gray markers and I am trying to add some shading to all the pleats and all the folds. It just gives it a more realistic look. 
And again, you don't have to be overly careful um, if you go out over the edges because you're going to be cutting it out. And I just took my colorless blender and blended out a little bit more to soften up any of those lines. And I will get that adhered down. I wanted to add a little bit more dimension, so I will be coloring that middle fold or that middle portion of the skirt as well as her bodice um, and the sleeves. So again, just using those cool gray markers to add some shadow. This is her hat, the middle portion of her hat. And then I'll be cutting these portions out so that I can add them over top the, the skirt and the bodice. I just added a little bit of dark marker there just so that no white would show through. And now this is the belt and the hat and the shoes. Again, I'm using cool gray but darker tones of cool gray and now I can just glue everything down. sort of putting her hat together. I didn't glue it on yet. I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to place it on her head. I had a little piece of white showing so I trimmed that down. So here's that middle portion of the skirt and that just adds a little bit more of dimension. I cut out the sleeves and the belt that I had colored and I glued those down in the exact same way and now I'm just cutting the entire paper doll out. For those um, inner portions, just using my craft knife here to cut away the insides. That's the easiest way to do it without bending your doll. So now I have a piece of pattern paper, measure 6 by 8 and I have some dies from Mama Elephant. I cut out some clouds using vellum and I cut out some grass using the landscape ones. Just going to add a little bit of shading with some green ink to the hills. And then just start positioning everything down. Trying to decide where I wanted that vellum to go if I wanted it over the hill or under the hill, so I decided that kind of looked nice. And so I'm just sort of gluing everything down. With vellum you have to be a little bit careful. You don't want the adhesive to show, so you have to be a little bit creative. Make sure that when you're gluing down the vellum it will be hidden by something else so that you don't see the adhesive. So I just took that over the panel over to my paper trimmer and trimmed off the edge so it was nice and clean. And this Eiffel Tower was die cut using a La La Land craft stamp die. I believe it's called Eiffel Tower. And I die cut that in some brown cardstock. I'm just adding some embellishments up at the top here just so that the space isn't too empty. take my zig glue pen and just add dots of glue to the Eiffel Tower. Just make sure I have it everywhere and then I'm going to glue that down. I'm going to put my block on top of it to press it down so that it dries onto the paper. And then I'm using some adhesive glue as well as my zig glue to glue down my paper doll. Just work with her until she's exactly where I want her to be. Then I'll wait for that all to dry. I have a little stamp here. This was from a Stampin' Up! set called Artistic Etchings, which I don't believe is um, available anymore. I think it's retired, but I did check and you can find it on eBay. So um, I guess just search that title and I'll leave a I'll leave the 
title down below in the product listing for you and if you would like to get the set then then you'll be able to get it from eBay so just adding a few sequins just for a little little pop pick up that um, gold embossing powder color um, that I stamped the sentiment with I'll just pick that up with the sequin color and I always have a little bit of a tough time um, placing them so that look they look random but in actual fact they're kind of placed anyways I always start with too many and then I have to sort of rein myself in and um, pull some away so I'm just using that zig glue pen again and my quick stick pickup tool to get all those sequins adhered and that was the last step uh, before my page was completed so I hope you've enjoyed watching the creation of this page I had a lot of fun making it and it has now been popped into my art journal album thank you so much for watching a full list of supplies and links will be found below this video on YouTube and you can also find it on my blog bye